Today we recruited a bunch of humans to come and play with us in the park and to do a few experiments on collective behaviour. So we had to pretend to be different animals and to try to come up with this collective behaviour to see if we could mimic the behaviours of different animals depending on the level of intellect. So at first we were sheep and sheep dogs and we had to try and act in the same way as the animals without really communicating with each other. So we just had each other's movements and a set of instructions to go on. I wanted for them to think about a system, another collective behaviour system, that they would be familiar with and ask them to work out what the rules might be. So a kind of reverse engineer from the phenomena that they're familiar with, what were the rules that dictate that behaviour. So I chose a murmuration of starlings as something that you know, most people are familiar with. I've seen you know, tens of thousands of birds twisting and turning on the wing and not bumping into each other. And you know, What's driving that, that mechanism? Um, what's driving that coordination? And then we had a go being slime mould. Slime mould is a very simple organism. It's a single-celled organism. No brain, no uh, sensory organs, no uh, central nervous system, but has a high capacity for com communication and coordination. And so that was, that was the finale, then to become a collective body, uh, one single unit that was communicating through oscillations, um, motivation to be connected in, in one super organism, and then respond to attractants or repellents in its environment. Kind of getting out of your individualistic mindset was really good fun. Trying to work as a whole, was, it was a different experience, something that you have to, you have to kind of go, go above your ego to work as a, as a group, which was which is really important to practice, I think.